Hi, this is Ron Kaufman. I'm with Jeff Eilertson. We're looking at what are the major reasons that clients come and knock on our door and say, I wonder if you could help us. We've got five reasons. We've covered the first four. Jeff, last one, number five. Good. Uh, and this one's a bit overarching, but it's really the disconnect between how leaders see service and service performance and how those who are actually performing the service see service performance. Okay. And it works both ways. Tell us. Sometimes we have organizations who say, you know what, our leaders think service is great around here, but the people on the front lines or operationally are saying, you know what, we're really struggling. There's a lot of problems that leadership is not seeing. You guys don't get it. Right. But it's the reverse as well, where you have people on the front lines, people operationally saying, hey, Everything what we're doing is, is good enough. Well, it's good enough. You okay. Know, why should we do any better? And the leaders are saying, yep, this good enough isn't going to be good enough for long. They're looking around the corner at competitive situations, rising expectations, and they know they cannot keep their edge with the level of service that's being provided. So now. what do you do? How do we bring this together? Well, that's the issue. It's creating a way that it can, there's going to be some more fluidity between understanding, awareness, continuous improvement that cuts across these levels. And what happens is customer service often gets put in a box and it's put down in a department. Well, the it's front the service lines. department over exactly, there. Exactly, huh? exactly. But they're not seeing it more holistically as a leadership issue, as a cultural issue, um, and something that everybody's involved in. So one of the things that our service excellence principles and workshops and certification of workshop leaders does is it produces what we call a common service language. Right, right. right? All of our principles are not auto industry principles and banking industry principles, right. they're generic service principles. All of our principles are not external service principles or internal service principles, they actually apply to any Everywhere. service situation. Right. So then I would imagine they can even apply if I'm a leader thinking about how am I serving my team? Yes. Absolutely. And is that helping to get one language working through the whole organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it just reminds me, I was in a client recently who said they had six different customer service training programs you know, language going on, yeah. all at cross purposes. Yeah. And there's no way that you can achieve a culture of service or a relationship between leaders and employees that's fluid and natural if you have all that or noise between going departments. On. Or between departments. Right. And right. that naturally happens because finance department has one language and yeah. marketing department's yeah. got another language. HR department's got another language. They don't have a common service language. Right, right. So the common service language lets us all talk together, have the same language of what's happening, what level of service we're we providing, and what's Really fascinating to me about that is how senior leaders tend to be the ones who really grab hold of that first. Right. They recognize, once they see it, they recognize the value the of that. The power And they of can that. be good role models. For and it. the responsibility, exactly. Yeah. 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 We've seen clients where the team will do that, and I talk to the CEO a year later, and they don't actually know the language of the principal. Yeah. They know they're going to have problems. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got others where within a month, the CEO has embraced the language of yes. our fundamental service principles, is using them and insisting that everybody else does, and you know you're going to have a successful case study. Yeah, yeah. I had one CEO, manufacturing company. He said, I don't care about any other measure. First six months, all I want to pay attention to is am I hearing this language in the organization? Because you know that if you're it's using new. the language, that produces and it supports a certain kind of meaning, yes. and that's something that we're now all going to share right. as we focus on whatever it is we want to improve. Right. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, yeah. thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to do these interviews with you and to work with you with clients all over the world. Good, Ron. Feelings mutual. <laughs>